Bamboo is a very useful plant having several desirable characteristics. Although it was never considered to be a crop plant, a systematically cultivated and managed plantation of bamboo can be a highly profitable and continuing source of income. As a plantation crop, one should select a type that yields medium-sized, solid or hollow poles because there is a good market for them. Ideally, the bamboo poles should be about 8 to 10 centimeters broad at the base and they should be about 6 to 8 meters long. Bamboo can grow anywhere. The plants do not require watering if the annual rainfall is more than about 800 to 1000 millimeters. If the rainfall is less than this, the shortfall must be made up with irrigation. However, bamboo needs water only in the monsoon season. After the rainy season, bamboo sheds its leaves and goes into dormancy. As planting material, one can use either seedlings raised in plastic bags or small rhizomes produced by planting the seed on raised beds. The seedlings or rhizomes should be planted at a spacing of 3 meters between the rows and 1 meter within the row. If the soil is shallow, sandy or rocky, the bamboo seedlings should be planted into pits having 30 centimeters each of length, breadth and depth. The pits should be filled with a mixture of good soil and compost before planting bamboo seedlings into them. If the bamboo seedlings are to be planted in a farm with good soil or in an area having good soil depth, they can be planted into relatively small pits just large enough to accommodate the rhizome or the soil ball of the seedling. Planting should be undertaken at the beginning of the rainy season. The plants may be watered once or twice immediately after transplanting. Because of the wide spacing, a companion crop may be grown between the rows of bamboo during the first year or two, but later on, when bamboo has grown, its shade would not allow any other crop to be grown as a companion crop in it. Because bamboo is a wild plant, it is not affected by any serious pest or disease. But because it is a grass, it has to be protected in the early stages of growth from herbivorous animals like stray cattle, pigs, rabbits, deer, etc. Bamboo does not need any chemical fertilizers. But if fertilizers are applied, it gives high yield. At the recommended spacing of 3 meters by 1 meter, a hectare would accommodate 
3,333 plants. A plantation starts yielding bamboo poles from the fifth year onwards. A bamboo plant produces new shoots every year. If the poles are not regularly harvested, they get overcrowded. Under such conditions, they either get entangled into one another or they push against each other, resulting into the poles growing crooked. To avoid this, all the poles should be harvested when they have completed three years of their life. The full yield potential of annually about 20 to 25,000 poles per hectare is realized about seven to eight years from the date of planting. If each pole were to be sold at an average price of rupees 20, this crop would give an annual income of rupees 500,000 per hectare. Bamboo has many uses. Apart from being used in making the traditional baskets, winnowing trays, grain storage bins, ladders, etc. Bamboo is also used for making paper and rayon. In some regions of India, tender shoots of bamboo are used as human food. In addition, bamboo is also used for making outdoor structures like scaffoldings, arches and supports for vines, mats, wicker work partitions or fencing. But under outdoor conditions, microorganisms like fungi and bacteria, wood boring insects and termites destroy bamboo. As a result, structures made from bamboo do not last very long under outdoor conditions. Degradation of bamboo by such biological agents can be prevented by a chemical treatment. Treatment for increasing the outdoor life of bamboo. For this treatment, make a solution made by dissolving 400 grams potassium or sodium dichromate, 300 grams copper sulfate and 150 grams of boric acid in 10 liters of water. A freshly harvested bamboo culm, and cut its side branches to leave stumps of about 15 cm length at each node. Put this ring on the culm from the narrower end and slide it downwards till it fits tightly on the pole. Cut the culm at this point and discard the cut end. Then take this pesticide pump and put the foot valve of the pump into the bucket containing the treatment solution. Place the pole on the plastic sheet like this.
screw the cut end of the bamboo culm into the front end of the adapter. Remove the spraying lance of the pesticide pump and attach in its place this specially prepared adapter. Tie an empty plastic bag at the basal end of the bamboo pole. By gently moving the liver of the pump, introduce the treatment solution into the bamboo pole. As the solution moves forward along the bamboo pole, a small part of it comes out from each of the branch stumps. In about half an hour, the solution would start dripping from the basal end of the pole, indicating completion of the treatment. If the bamboo culm has been harvested and kept for several days, it can no longer be treated with the help of the pesticide pump. It can however be treated by soaking it in the treatment solution. It is necessary to make a drenching tank with the help of bricks and plastic film. The bamboo poles should be punctured like this near each node with the help of a drill. Fill the drenching tank with the necessary amount of the treatment solution. One would require a very large tank and also a lot of treatment solution if intact poles were to be drenched. Therefore, the poles should be cut into pieces of the size required for the job to be undertaken. The treatment tank should always be covered by plastic film like this. For proper impregnation of the poles, drench them from 48 to 72 hours depending upon the species of the bamboo. After the soaking treatment, the poles should be dried for 8 days in shade before using them. Bamboo treated in this way lasts for 15 to 20 years under outdoor conditions. Bamboo Tank This water tank is made by weaving strips of bamboo taken from a chemically treated bamboo. It rests on a plinth constructed by using bricks, stones and cement mortar. The surface of the plinth should be about 15 to 20 centimeters 
above the soil surface and its diameter should be about 15 centimeters larger than the diameter of the tank. Bamboo poles of adequate height should be fixed into the plinth while the latter is being constructed. The ends of the pole that are incorporated into the plinth should be fitted with steel rods like this so that the poles cannot be pulled out of the plinth. Cure the masonry work by sprinkling water over it. After the cement mortar has become hard, place the woven bamboo tank into the circle formed by the poles and fit a plastic inset into the tank to make it watertight. After filling the tank with water, cover it with black plastic film. This would keep the water uncontaminated for a long time. This is a domestic tank of 40 liters capacity. The woven bamboo structure can be used for a tank having a capacity of up to 5000 liters. For larger tanks, it is advisable to use a lining of galvanized iron sheet. While constructing such tanks, it should be kept in mind that although the tank can have any desirable diameter, its height should not exceed 120 centimeters. Bamboo cart and furniture. Here you see a hand cart made of bamboo. Because it has only one wheel, it can be pushed over very narrow paths along the bunds in the field or even between two rows of a crop. By using such carts, the strenuous work of carrying heavy loads on head or shoulders can be avoided. One can also make rustic household furniture by using bamboo. Solar dryer Fruits, vegetables, various items of food, medicinal plants, etc. can be dried naturally in sunlight by using this solar dryer made of bamboo. The dryer comes in two sizes. The household dryer has a width of 90 cm and height of 135 cm. The commercial dryer has a width of 120 cm and height of 145 cm. For making the household model, one takes four staves of 135 cm length. These staves are fitted with steel hooks at a spacing of 15 cm from one end. At the other end of the staves, fit one hook each like this. In the intervening space between these two hooks, fit a series of hooks at a regular spacing of 25 cm between them. Then take four staves, each 90 cm long. Fit rings or hooks at each end of these staves. The eight staves are connected to each other like this to form a pyramid. The four hooks at the apex of the pyramid are held together by a common ring like this. The shelves in this dryer are made of chicken mesh reinforced by bamboo strips.
The borders of the shelves should be lined with cloth strips. The corners of the shelves should be provided with loops like this. The shelves are hung inside the pyramidal frame by means of the loops. Before commissioning the dryer, attach a square sheet of plastic film at the bottom of the dryer. Then hang the shelves within the pyramid starting with the bottom shelf. Fill each shelf completely with material to be dried before fixing the next shelf above it. After all the shelves have been fitted, cover the dryer with this plastic hood. The hood protects the material from dust, flies and birds. Because direct sunlight cannot reach the items to be dried, their original color is retained even after drying. One should use solid bamboo for making bamboo carts, furniture and bamboo dryer. Bamboo Fencing One should always use chemically treated bamboo for fencing. This ensures long life under outdoor conditions. Post holes into the soil with the help of a crowbar and fix the vertical poles in the ground with the help of cement concrete. Fit an iron bar into the end of the fence post that is to go underground. These bars, called hold fasts, serve to anchor the posts in their places. Fit wickerwork panels like this between two adjacent posts. Such a fencing becomes very strong and impenetrable. The bamboo wicker work plastered on both sides can also serve as a wall while constructing a house. Bamboo Dome the dome is constructed by joining treated bamboo poles to each other by means of steel discs like this. By cladding the dome with bamboo matting or with a plastic tarpaulin, one can use it either as a storage shed or even as living space. Greenhouse or Nursery Shade House One can use treated bamboo poles for constructing these structures. Such a structure costs just a tenth of the structures made of angular steel or steel tubing and yet they are as durable as those made by using steel members. Making charcoal from bamboo. Our institute has developed this kiln for making high grade charcoal. Bamboo pieces are filled into these barrels and placed into the kiln for charring. The process is so fast that one gets a fresh batch of charcoal every hour. This charcoal is excellent for cooking.
because it does not produce any smoke or soot and its ash content is also very low.